got the gloves just in case we need them. We got our shop apron on. We're ready to roll on this workbench. So I'm going to show you the tools we need. And then I'm going to show you the material. And then we're going to get into it. Maybe some even tricks that I've learned and things I do. Remember, this is kind of an unorthodox way of doing things. Bare minimum tools. Right now we're kind of working on the, uh, working on even bare minimum work surface. So this is, get you going. So the first thing we got, again, is a good tape measure. Uh, I just got your basic, but if you want to get one that has the markings on it that helps you reach the fourth, the halves, and the three eighths and stuff, you could do that. Just get a tape measure that you feel comfortable with, uh, with uh, getting and the, uh, that it feels comfortable in your hand and then you, you can read it good. So get you a good tape measure. Some good squares. I like a speed square and even a combination square would work. Get you some pencils you can mark with and a way to sharpen them good. These are all important for laying out your project. Then we're just going to be using hand saws. I promise this is going to be bare minimum tools and this is what we're going to work with. Just get you a good, uh, make sure it's a, it says smooth cut. Uh, make sure like this saw says aggressive on it. You don't want that right off the bat. I use this for a specific reason. Make sure it's like this saw right here where it says smooth cut on it or fine tooth or sometimes just has the most teeth per square inch that it gets you a good square smooth cut and they're usually pretty easy to use. Next thing, next thing we need a lot of is if you're going to start buying woodworking tools just start right off the bat getting you your wood clamps and uh, today or through this project we're going to be using a couple of these 36 inch clamps you're going to need some long ones is it's just going to make things easier and a couple of these small little harbor freight things here and some different ones of these quick I just call them quick clamps I don't know the exact name but in some type of way of clamping the corners together to help hold it while you're trying to nail this was, so Harbor Freight sells these things also I'll demo these here when we when it comes time to put these together but also if you can't get those Get you some kind of where it's where it's square and it's actually at a 90 but uh, get you if you want to get some of these also how these can help you also as corner clamps so make sure you just keep buying clamps a lot of clamps and as a woodworker we always need clamps sandpaper and wood glue and and screws nails all that so the more you buy even if you feel like you're overstocking just any kind of clamp if it's a clamp and it can help you buy it next we're gonna just use hammers and nails with the nails make sure when doing this, I like to buy a little twisted galvanized nail. It's not straight. And what this does is it bites more and it doesn't peel out of there or come loose over time. It usually stays put. I've been told as you drive it in, it actually turns like a screw. I've never paid attention to see if there's any truth to that or not. So but these i know for a fact they hold a lot better so uh, they're a little bit more expensive but they're worth the money so we got one pound of what's called 
16D right here to show 16D on the package and they're usually also three and a half inches or longer some of them are longer depending on the brand but it should say at least 16D uh, my grandfather used to call them 16 penny but a pound of uh, 16D the other nails you we will need is uh, just a 6D. It'll say on the package a 6D or also maybe 7 eighths of an inch, but at least look for the 6D. You're also going to need some wood glue. I prefer a type 2 wood glue and I like the tri barn grill glue also makes a type 2 wood glue. I wouldn't I would either stick with a type 2 or a type 3. A normal just type 1 is for indoor only. A type 2 could be indoor outdoor. It's semi waterproof and a type 3 is completely waterproof. Okay as you see I'm being kind of fighting the sun here but uh, right right here the material we need I got one here on our makeshift workbench our guard cat is guarding it making sure nobody uh, takes it but uh, we got one two before here and then four over here so we got five eight foot long two by fours all together and then two 10 foot long one by eight and these are nutty pine uh, material I do got two treated the two treated I didn't buy at this time I had some in, in, in my wood pile the rest I bought but all together uh, you should be able to pick up all this material for about maybe 40 bucks or so uh, depending on your area and the prices in your area okay I temporarily brought you in the wood shop because out there competing with the Sun you absolutely would not be able to see this diagram so I want to make sure you're gonna be able to see it good thing it's going down so hopefully the rest of this uh, give us better visibility but uh, I want you to be able to see what I'm getting ready to explain, especially with this here. We're going to make a 24 by 24 as far as the width, the widths of this here and the depths. It's going to be a 24, 24, so this is going to be a square. Um, but what I want to explain is on a 2 by 4 it's not really a two by four it's actually usually a three by one and a half uh, most of the time so what you're going to want to do is on this 24 length when you make this in this board that is going to connect on the inside you want to subtract the one and a half and one and a half from your 24 inch measurement so the one and a half and one and a half is actually three so if you subtract three from 24 inches you'll have this inside length is going to be 21 inches and since we're going to make two of, of these here one's going to make for the top surface and one's going to make for uh, the middle surface now you could make another bracing here had to go in the middle uh, uh, but uh, I actually got a purpose for this workbench later on so if you want to make a bracing for this in the mid middle uh, you're going to have to uh, uh, measure the inside of this here and uh, plan those measurements so uh, basically I believe it would be the same thing so you would want to just add two more to this 21 inch uh, quantity right here you would want to uh, six of them okay, one thing I want to note is as you saw with your 
hand saw of course you're going to be removing material as the point point of sawing but it also removes a certain thickness of material now as I understand it this here is called the blade kerf so when we do our layout of of uh, measuring our measurements we also want to make sure that when we get ready to cut later on that we're accounting for the blade curve and making sure that when we make our cuts that we're still going to get from this end to the next that it's going to be the measurement that we that we want so it's important to know because of that blade curve for the amount of material that the saw blade would take out of if I took this 96 inch or 8 foot long 2x4 and just tried to divide the 24 inches in one 2x4 by the time I get to the end I'm going to be shy and then our measurement's going to be off on the last one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two uh, 24 inch cuts out of one 2x4 and then two 21 inch so two 24 inch and two 21 inch out of one 2x4 and then I'm going to do the same thing out of the second 2x4 that will give us our four 24 inch measurements we need in our four 21 inches out of two 2x4 two so I'll go ahead and start marking this I'm gonna do try to do these two both uh, together and then I'm gonna uh, show you how we could cut these together so I'm gonna get started we're gonna add our first 24 inch measurement and some people likes to do a little V I just do one single line but if you want to do a V, you can. Now on this next measurement, because of that blade curve, you got 24 and then 48. That blade curve is usually the next mark. If I can show you here on the lot on the tape measure. So when you got your 24 and then you go up to 48 this, this next mark is usually your blade curve and you want to take an effect of that from your first cut of your 24 so when you cut your 24 inches here you're going to take off this amount so that's going to be missing down this this way in this second piece so what you want to do on your 48 is where this measures to 48 you want to go just one notch over and make your mark there so you get an actual 24 inches out of, out of this so hopefully I explained that good enough uh, sometimes I have a hard time with my wording but uh, so I made my 24 inch mark when I cut this, it's going to take off material for this piece, the second piece. So when we cut for our 48 inches, you don't want to mark right at the 48. You want to take into account uh, the amount of material we lost at this end. That way this, this piece here ends up being the 24 inches that we mark. So, the rest of this is going to get confusing, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and mark this here, 24 inches, and then I'm going to mark the 48, but go to the next, mark over, the very next mark on your tape measure from the 48 inches. That way we can account for that. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do while I'm here. Is 
square this off. And find the marks we have down here. And double check our measurements. Measure twice, cut once. So once we got that, we could go out 21. Again, this might not be the best method and there's probably easier ways to do this, uh, but with limited tools and limited space, we're kind of, you know, sometimes when you're limited, you have gotta do things a little bit harder. Now, since we accounted for the saw, the saw curve for taking out at this end, we accounted for that here, then, then this is going to be all good. So it's kind of like a, every other thing as you go down the board. So right here we could go ahead, put this on our mark. check our measurement it's always easy to remark it now and then try and fix our oops later that, and that's good so but I would encourage you to do on this end so you don't have to mess with the Kind of figure in the saw curve. Let's go ahead and measure your other 21 inches coming this way. Okay, we got our our setup here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my safety glasses on now that we're gonna be slinging sawdust in the air. And you can use gloves if you want. Uh, sometimes it, it still helps, at least on the opposite hand you're using the saw just in case you have a slip up so I would recommend it and what I did is I put these two together squared them up and made sure that these marks I made uh, is all lined up and then I clamped this in a fashion where these these are going to make move so I can cut it to board time so what I did when I placed what would be my cut guide for the saw, I placed it so it would take account for the curve of the saw blade. So what you want to do is at the low, lower part of the saw, you want to make sure on this here that when you're cutting this, you're not cutting on this side of the line, this here's your work, and this here is considered your waist, even though we're going to be using the rest of this. But on this particular cutting, when you're cutting here, one side is your work and one side is your waist. So you want to make sure that when you line this up and you check this, that when you get done making your cut, that this is still 24 inches. If I cut on this side of the line, on, on, on the side of this, I'm going to take off enough material where this will not no longer be 24 inches. So, and it's important to note that these saws, at least this kind I'm using in the video, it only cuts on the downstroke. It doesn't do anything when you go on the upstroke, but it helps to clean out your teeth. Uh, from the sawdust that you get packed in your teeth. So 
when you're sawing you just want to focus on the downstroke uh, in a motion now you do pull up a little bit to score the wood to get your saw going but once you get your saw going you kind of want to use let the whole saw do the motion for you and you want to just kind of use a like a motion of you saw downward and lift up slightly so you clean the teeth out and then saw downward and another thing you want to do is use your pointer finger you don't want to use it like this because it'd be easy for the saw to move in your hand going side to side but if you use your finger here it helps it helps hold the saw so you're you're not going to uh, sway side by side and it helps cut straighter so you can kind of point point your your finger down so what we're going to do is we're going to score the wood first give it a good couple just even using the whole saw good couple even you want to watch just to make sure that it is cutting on the line that you want it to cut and you're basically scribing a line just at first four or five good ones and then try and get to go forward now this Stanley saw it does a pretty good job now you're using this straight edge but you don't want to actually be pushing the saw real hard against the straight edge you just want this to move nice and even on the straight edge so the straight edge just helps us guide us as beginners uh, because I don't, I'm not as good cutting straight with a handsaw, so I use a straight edge to make sure I get good square cuts. So again, and you'll hear this saw. In. Just let the saw do the work. Going all the way around. Then before I do my setup, use your thumb out as your straight edge because we're not cutting the whole thing. And we're gonna score this. We're gonna cut just enough. And then when I flip this over, this here is on my side, so when I go through the cut, this is on my side, so it's not going to do this. Keep things as safe as possible. So again, 
we're gonna put our thumb to be not under the blade but on the on the side of the blade here see it did not it did not do this so and these match up it, this is off the first cut because we had a little boo-boo there is the second cut per, per, perfect pair So, we got four 24 inches. Now this here was a little different on our cut just because I don't want to have this sticking out. I want to cut on this side. So the way we got to account for our saw curve is different.
we go ahead put this exactly on that line so we can cut on the waist side and not on the workpiece side we don't have to worry about the the curve for making sure we have enough room for the curve As you see here, they're not exactly exactly perfect, but they're close enough that they'll work. 